Five in five, five barriers in assessment and evaluation that we need to dismantle and disrupt. Barrier number one, lack of clarity around the purpose of assessment. Just as assessment has the potential to uplift our learners, it can also do harm. Students, parents, and educators alike often think that the purpose of assessment is to sort and rank, as this was true in many of our own school experiences. Putting a mark on every single assignment a student completes is one action aligned with that way of thinking. However, enshrined in our policy document, Growing Success, is the idea that the purpose of assessment is to improve student learning. If something we are doing is not in service of that purpose, we need to rethink it. Barrier number two, tasks without multiple entry points. When tasks do not have multiple entry points, we limit how fair, valid, and reliable they are. Our learners each come with their own strengths and learning needs, and tasks that allow them to demonstrate their learning in ways that are best suited to them are the most equitable. It's okay for students to have different tasks to meet the same learning goals. Thinking that tasks are only usable for assessment if they are the same is another example of thinking that its purpose is to sort and rank. What matters is consistency in the learning goals and in high expectations of all learners. Barrier number three, lack of awareness of personal biases and perceptions of students. What does a good student look and act like? Everyone has biases, which is why we need to interrogate our own power and privilege to check them as much as possible. Without doing so, these implicit biases can lead to decisions made about students that are racist, sexist, ableist, heterosexist, transphobic, and classist. Our beliefs as educators are what create systems and structures that marginalize students, and systems can also affirm our beliefs. We need to monitor and disrupt thinking that results in oppressive practices. Barrier number four, not valuing conversations and observations in addition to products within a body of evidence. Just as we plan for instruction, we need to plan for assessment. When we know what we are looking for, we can plan opportunities for students to demonstrate where they are in relation to the learning goals. We often talk about triangulating conversations, observations, and products to ascertain student strengths and next steps. This is never an equilateral triangle. Certain types of evidence will naturally be more significant depending on the student, as we know their best ways to show their understandings. What students say, do, and represent are equally important, but will mean different things to different kids. For example, conversations and observations will give you a more accurate picture about what a student knows and is able to do if they struggle with writing. Just because it doesn't have a mark on it doesn't mean it can't count. Barrier number five, not being able to see, hear, and or interact with students due to circumstances beyond our control. When circumstances beyond our control, such as the COVID-19 pandemic, create barriers to connecting with any of our students, we need to remember that the purpose of assessment is to improve learning and prioritize their well-being above all else. Having challenges seeing them, hearing their voices, using body language, and other nonverbal forms of communication are just some examples of reasons why you may not have the kinds of triangulated information you usually seek to develop a clear picture of where each student is in their learning. This requires educators to get even more creative in the ways we plan for collecting a body of evidence while at the same time, becoming comfortable with the fact that things might look different and even feel less certain. And sometimes that has to be okay. Hey, hey.